Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. As storytelling evolves, so does audience expectations. But the one thing that has never changed is the importance of telling a story that defies the expectations of the audience. In its most basic components, there can't be more than a few dozen stories in the history of mankind. These stories are carefully and meticulously rewrapped and retold in a variety of creative fashions. Star Wars is just another chapter in the great oratory tradition of mankind, an epic odyssey full of love and revenge and betrayal. But what sets Star Wars apart from its competitors is not its narrative, but the world that it builds around it. Few fictional worlds have ever been so fleshed out and realized in such complexity. To fans, Star Wars stories become a tale within a universe that they're quite familiar with, which makes the story a lot more personal. But when things become personal, we become less objective observers, and we start to lean towards comfort and expectations rather than scrutiny and rationale. And there's no organization in Star Wars that people have more personal feelings for than the Jedi Order. As a young boy, I adopted a mistrust of the Jedi based on one simple reason. I liked blasters and armor, and I felt like magical wizards with swords and robes felt out of place in the sci-fi genre. It's not to say that I wouldn't eventually develop a deep respect and admiration for certain Jedi, but from the beginning, I never saw the Jedi as strictly heroes, albeit for very superficial reasons. But nonetheless, this predisposition gave me the opportunity to look at the Jedi Order with clear eyes, which was important because this was around the time the prequel trilogy had come out. Now, the original trilogy had left much to imagination. The Jedi Order was a mysterious organization that was a relic of the past. And although we are generally led to believe that they were the good guys, very little was actually known about them or the Sith. And it's hard to criticize and scrutinize things that you know very little about, which is an important lesson for any young writers out there. But the prequels, for better or worse, began showing what this organization was really like. I, for one, loved details and background information and soaked up all the information about the Jedi Order that I could. And as the Clone Wars period was fully fleshed out with two excellent cartoons, dozens of novels, including the very critical Republic Commando series, a much clearer picture of the Jedi Order emerged. It was becoming harder and harder to preserve the Jedi's image as holy warriors of the light. The Jedi, like anything that encounters the muck of reality, seemed a lot more valuable and troubled than we were led to originally believe, especially during the few centuries before the Clone Wars, which was ironically known as the Golden Era for the Jedi Order. So today we're going to be taking a much deeper look into the Jedi Order's training and mantra and determine what exactly this organization was actually about. We are led to believe that the Jedi Order existed as guardians of the Republic and a counter of the great evil that was the Sith. But a look at their policies, beginning with their recruitment policies, belies a much more nefarious purpose for this organization. The Order spends a massive amount of resources and manpower on finding and collecting information on Force-sensitive children across the galaxy. They do this by using a variety of methods from deploying agents known as Seekers, who were especially adept at sensing individuals through the Force. Sometimes, blood tests from public records were used to find individuals with high midichlorian counts. And then there are other times when the High Jedi Council could even combine their powers through meditation to find potential recruits. Now, there are different accounts on the official Jedi policy for recruitment, but it's more or less assumed that a Force-sensitive child is heavily encouraged, if not sometimes forced, into joining the Jedi Order, even against their parents' wishes, especially during periods of hardship or war. Perhaps even more troubling is how young these children are when they're snatched away from their parents, usually before their second birthday. The idea is a blank template is easier to mold and control. Let's here begin to understand that the Jedi viewed these four sensitives not only as potential recruits, but also as dangerous individuals. That is the one fundamental difference between a Jedi and a Sith. The Sith viewed those with the Force as a gift and almost superior to ordinary people. The Jedi, however, were more cautious and ever worried about an individual drifting to the dark side. So when a Jedi recruiter looks at a Force-sensitive baby, they also see a potential future Dark Lord. This leads us to the very rigid and conformist structure of the Jedi Temple. Now, Yoda frequently preached that fear led to anger, which led to hate and ultimately the dark side. Yet ironically, he had lost sight that his organization had become fearful of the dark side. 
No quarter was given to the Sith, no trial, no hearing. They were to be destroyed in a flurry of violence. Mace Windu, a high-ranking member of the Order, was prepared to execute Darth Sidious even after disarming him. This runs counter to the Jedi beliefs and code. The adherence to the code and rules were very important for a Jedi because it helps protect an individual from irrational behavior caused by emotions. Rules can guide an individual, and they can be a useful fallback when an individual is unsure of themselves. But it also removes what makes us human, the passion, the feelings, the biases that we have from previous experiences. Rules can prevent unexpected results and more importantly, prevent people from falling to the dark side, or at least that was the expectations of the Jedi Order. In reality, rules and laws break apart the moment they hit reality and its more nuanced parameters. No rule can account for each and every specific circumstance or Jedi encounters, and oftentimes these new circumstances really do deserve deep analysis, especially when it involves life or death situations. During the Golden Age of the Jedi Order, the Jedi faced few foes and fell into a sort of comfort and stagnation that always seems to precede a great organization's fall from power. And so, on the ever-changing chaotic battlefields of the Clone Wars, the Jedi Order was caught completely unprepared. Now, the idea behind the Jedi training system is no different from the education we give our children here on Earth. It's an unperfect system that was designed to benefit the majority and not the minority. Our education system is a relic of the Industrial Revolution, a time when children needed to be prepared to be obedient and work on assembly lines and factories. We weren't taught to think for ourselves or find motivation, we were just taught to follow orders and be able to put up with the mundane repetition of a job that now no longer exists. In the same way, the Jedi Temple did their best to prepare all their younglings for a future that is not so certain. The greatest fear again of the Jedi Order was that these Force-sensitive children would turn to the dark side. And naturally, emotions and attachments were seen as the quickest route to the dark side. So the Jedi sought to do everything in their power to eliminate those aspects of an individual, but what the Jedi of this era failed to realize was that suppression of basic instincts almost never works. That's because some people are just born passionate and on fire like Anakin. Others are more tempered and even headed and fit more in line with the Jedi Order's philosophies like Obi-Wan Kenobi. But instead of coming to terms with the wide range of personalities within the Jedi Order and try to teach each and every Jedi how to cope with their emotions and even use them to their advantage, the Jedi Order instead tried to hide their emotions. They removed the Jedi from their family. They don't allow them to develop meaningful bonds with other people. They isolate them from society so that their highest loyalty lies with the Jedi and the Force. It doesn't take a psychologist to realize that this is a very damaging and dangerous thing to do to a child. These are more like the actions of a dangerous cult rather than a benevolent, nurturing organization. We are genetically wired to be social creatures, to be loved, to find support and comfort from our families and parents. We see some of the more compassionate Jedi develop a relationship exactly like that. But more often than not, we see Jedi pairings like Master Luminara and Barriss Ophi, a by-the-books Jedi Master and Padawan pairing. Even when her Padawan is assumed to be dead, Master Luminara hardly sheds a tear because it's simply not the Jedi way. It comes to no surprise that Barriss Ophi would eventually crack under all that pressure and suppression and go to the dark side. If anything, Anakin, despite his traumatic childhood, exemplified what it meant to be a hero, not necessarily a Jedi. He loved his Padawan, he cared for his troops, and in doing so, he won many great victories. But ultimately, Anakin, like many other more independent Jedi, would fall out of favor of the Jedi Order. Some responsibility for Anakin's fall to the dark side must also lie with the High Jedi Council's inability to accept someone like him, or someone like Count Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn, who all had their heads in the right place, at least in the beginning. The rules that the Jedi lay forth were like most rules. They were designed to protect the most vulnerable and weakest-willed individuals within the Jedi Order. Individuals that desperately needed to be shielded from corruption and themselves. But so many more Jedi were pure of heart and would have flourished in a more open-minded and flexible Jedi Order. Imagine how much research Qui-Gon Jinn could have accomplished on the Cosmic Force and Living Force had he been officially sanctioned to look into it. What about Count Dooku and sifo forays into Jedi prophecies? Instead of being afraid of the future, maybe the Jedi Council would have greatly benefited from learning about the future. After all, they were blindsided by the events of Order 66. Instead, as things got crazier and the war became deadlier, the Jedi Order went the opposite way. 
They became more rigid, less willing to be flexible, and accept other points of views. It's this group think that prevented the Jedi from realizing what they had become. They were no longer spiritual warriors, they were now soldiers and officers. They had titles like Commander and General, and more importantly, the training that the Jedi Order had bestowed on them made them detached, emotionless killers. Just take a look at the Jedi Code. There is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There is no death, there is the Force. In the context of warfare and massive losses of life, a denial of chaos, death, is almost criminal. This mantra is a clear attempt by the Jedi Order to desensitize their numbers. This is just a mantra that they can repeat in their heads while they're slaughtering people left and right. This leads the Jedi down a very dangerous path. It's not natural for human beings to kill each other. It's not natural for a human to be constantly exposed to violence and threat of violence. Our bodies and brains actually undergo some pretty radical changes during these heightened and stressful moments in our lives. To attempt to normalize such things is a recipe for disaster and mental illness. What the Jedi are trying to do here is to desensitize their numbers and essentially allow them to kill without remorse, make them into essentially sociopaths. A human should feel sorrow from killing or witnessing death. They should experience a wide range of emotions. To suppress them is not only unnatural, but I would go as far to say evil, especially when you're doing it to young children. And more importantly, many Jedi were just normal beings that had superpowers. They weren't more mentally tough or possessed more will than the average being, and so many of them did crack under the pressure. And because they lacked a healthy relationship with their emotions or an understanding that having emotions is normal, this oftentimes led to catastrophic results. It's not to say that the Jedi or Yoda or the High Council were evil or full of bad intent. It's more that their fear of potential outcomes blinded their judgment and made them try to control and suppress instead of teach and nurture. This is why dictatorships and authoritarianism are always the result of cowardice and fear. It takes a great amount of bravery and optimism to give people the freedom to live and decide on their own. So after a lot of reflection, I've come to that conclusion that the Jedi Order's training and philosophy uh, is designed to create essentially sociopaths and killing machines. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. I'm sure there are other opinions out there and I look forward to reading your comments. Anyway guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.